Hello, my beautiful craft mates. Today we're making this black salt protection spell bottle necklace with me, I'm Sunshine. And we're going to get started with the materials that you will need. I actually start here with this black wax candle. I get them from the grocery store. And I also use this bottle charm. They come in packs of eight from either Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And... Um, I just really like them because of the large packs they come in. I use the chains that come in the packs as well. And I have a spoon and a silicone funnel that came from my kitchen. Doesn't matter what kind of funnel you use as long as it goes inside the bottle. I have this big jar of black salt that I've made. And I have this tube of Beacon Brand Quick Grip. Um, this is a really great glue. You can use E6000 or super glue, but I wouldn't recommend using a Elmer's glue or something like that. You really want something with a strong hold. We're going to get started making the necklace. I'm going to start here by lighting the candle. This craft goes by pretty quickly. So having that wax liquid when we're ready to go makes it so much easier. I'm going to put the candle off to the side just like that. And I'm going to take the stopper off of the bottle, just like that, set it to the side. And I'm going to put my funnel inside the bottle. I'll kind of show you here. You want it really stuck in there uh, so it doesn't move or shift around. I'm going to take my black salt and my spoon, and I'm going to spoon the black salt into the bottle, into the funnel, I'm sorry, and tap it on the table so the black salt kind of goes into the bottle. I want to put a lot of black salt in my necklaces, so um, any extras, you just pinch the funnel and put any of the extras into the jar that it came from just to save it for later. I'm going to tap the bottle on the table just to really compact that black salt in the bottle. Below where I'm going to put the cork, just so I'm not pushing the cork up on accident. I'm going to take my glue, and you can see I really struggle with this glue. It's an old tube. I had to use my teeth at this point. <laughs> so you don't have to struggle with your glue. That is not a step. But when you get the glue open, you just want to put a small bead of glue around the bottom of the cork that goes inside the bottle. You want a pretty consistent bead. It can be messy. You just don't want any air bubbles inside the glue, inside the glue line. So that when you put it inside the bottle, there's no like black salt that comes out. So you just put a small bead of glue all the way around the edge. Again, it can be messy. You don't have to worry about that. And when you're done, you're just going to smush that cork onto the bottle. You want it to be pretty tight, just like that, um, and have a pretty tight hold. Um, you, it's okay if you have any glue kind of coming out. I smushed the cork onto the bottle pretty hard, and then I used my finger to wipe the excess glue off of the top of the bottle, and I just kind of check it, make sure it looks okay. Um, because of the packs that the bottles come in, you can, if you make a mistake, you can always make another one. I have this clear transparency sheet on my table to protect my table from the glue and the wax. And the bottle charms have this jump ring at the top. So I actually wax the jump ring first and just drip that wax all over the top. And then I'm going to set the candle off to the side and pop that jump ring up. So you see here, I've set the candle down, and I'm using my fingers to kind of pop that jump ring up and waiting for the wax to harden so the jump ring kind of stays in place while I continue to kind of seal that protection magic inside the bottle. So now I'm just going to drip wax all around the edge, and you just kind of do what feels natural to you. Just kind of do what you like to do. Depending on the bottles you end up liking or getting, you know, you can leave it just like that. I like to do a pretty thick wax um, seal on my bottles. And with these bottles, they have this little lip. And I don't like having like an a air pocket with the wax. So I drip the wax on that lip just to kind of make it so when the wax drips from the top of the jar to the bottom, it doesn't create these like caverns or air pockets. So I'm just dripping the wax on the, um, the lip of the bottle 
And when I'm con when I'm satisfied with how it looks, I just kind of pause in between moments and let the wax harden for a little bit and then continue going. If you just let it keep dripping, you'll actually melt the wax that you've already placed on there. So you just let it drip and do what just feels natural to you. If you want less wax, if you want more wax, you can do what you want to do. So the reason I'm making these black cell protection spell bottle necklaces, whew, that is a mouthful, is because with Samhain being the blue moon, I wanted to show a project that's really simple and easy that you can be done that makes it so you can carry black salt with you, especially on a really potent night, especially for all of us baby witches. You want really some serious protections with you when that veil is really thin. Um, so that's why I'm doing this. It's not um, one of my typical projects. Um, but now that you've got the wax kind of where you want it, um, you're going to let the wax harden. It only takes a couple minutes, but when the wax hardens, it makes it a little easier to kind of work with afterwards. So you can see um, the wax has kind of a little bit of a, a matte consistency. It's not nearly as glossy. And I just kind of take the wax off the edges of the bottle and kind of smush it so that it's not sticking out. And because of the wax that's inside the jump ring, you kind of want to move it around or poke it with like a little an awl or like a, your nails or something. I end up using a lighter to kind of melt that wax outside of the jump ring to make it a little easier to work with and put the chain inside of it. The reason I do this is because these jump rings have a tendency to be a little cheaper and um, you just want to be really careful with how you handle them. So I'm going to take this chain that came in the pack and again the chains and the jump rings in these packs are relatively cheap in terms of um, how they're made. They're not the best. So I don't actually loop the jump ring on the chain. I loop the chain through the jump ring and just kind of tie it. I don't know how, what that's called, if that's called a slip knot or whatnot, but I just kind of tie it in through that uh, jump ring just because it adds a little bit of extra stability in the necklace and makes it so it, um, it handles well and it holds really well. Now, when you're done with this, you can consecrate this with new moon water. That's what I like to do. The new moon is a very powerful protective moon. So I like to consecrate this with new moon water. And you can charge it and by putting it on your altar or um, putting it out in under a full moon or anything like that. But once it's done, you're ready to go. So thank you so much for watching my video. I'm Sunshine, the Days of Future Craft Teacher at Bees Academy of Witchcraft.